Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This is a review of the DIV MMC Enjoy by from this chap here, Ben Verskin. Hope I pronounced your name right, Ben. Basically bought this February this year, but unfortunately due to commitments and other things like having to have the house rewired, I haven't really got chance to play with it all that much. Obviously it's Christmas now, so I've got a chance to play with this. So let's have a look at my setup. Obviously I've got a classic ZX Spectrum Plus 2B there. I know it's a Plus 2B because it has none of the expansion or none of the expansion on it for disk drives, where obviously the Plus 2A did. The only sort of bar, the bar that interface, the only other modification that's been done to it, I don't know if you could call it a modification as such, is I purchased a RGB cable that'll um, go from the RGB port on the Speccy to my telly to provide me with obviously input by a SCART. So let's have a look at the boot up for the DVI device, DIV device, sorry. So when it starts obviously it runs through a boot screen then goes into 48k mode. Slightly disappointed it goes into 48k mode. I'm going to have to have a look see if there's a way of getting it to go into 128k. But that's just a bugbear for me. Obviously this specy, we bought it sort of 1990 time. 19, somewhere I think it was either 91 or 92 time we bought it. So that shows how old it is. Obviously this video has been filmed in 2014, so fairly old specky. Never really been modified inside. The main reason I bought the DVI device was, sorry, the DIV device, was the fact that the data corder is knackered. It refuses to load tapes anymore, so obviously I've got a specky emulator on my PC, but it's... It's not as good, in my opinion, as physical hardware. So, um, there you go. You may be wondering what that is there. Obviously, it's the it's a converter I bought when I originally got the Speccy to convert the joysticks of the day, sort of standard joystick of the time, into a joystick that the Speccy could actually use. So, enough of that. Let's have a quick look at the DVI device. Obviously, it's got a couple of buttons on there. You've got your NMI, and you have the reset button. So if we hit the NMI, ah, shouldn't have done that. So if we hit the NMI, yeah, that's the only problem found with this device, is if it isn't quite seated right, it can screw the specu. up. So I'm just going to pause the video at this point, I'll be back in a minute once I've got the DVI, sorry, the DIV device in properly. This, the expansion port on this spec is always has been a bit of a problem, so give me a sec, I'll just get it working properly and I can show you the other part of the review. Yeah, unfortunately, as I said a few minutes ago, this spec always has been a bit temperamental with the expansion port, so the device does work so if we go down to games 2 there's only a few files in there so if we go into there then we choose one of my favorite games which happens to be R-Type we enter on that obviously it's loading a tape file in this is one of the games that actually came with the device so as it as you can see on the screen somebody's sort of hacked it already so we'll just go for zero to enable everything just to show it working come on come on come on come on at least with this device you don't have to sit there for 20 minutes and get so much to load off tape as I said earlier on the reason I've got this device is the fact the data corder on this spec he happens to be buggered. I get more R loading errors than I actually managed to get it to load tape so when I came across this device on eBay I decided to buy it. Obviously prior to that the spec was in a box 
me. For this demo, I've pulled it back out of the box. That's why it's a bit dusty. I, I need to go inside, clean it up, and everything else. Try and sort a few issues out with it. So it's loaded. So hopefully, if I've done everything correctly and the joystick is working, I should be able to hit fire on it. Okay, the joystick doesn't seem to want to work on our tape so okay so obviously that's our tape then so if we hit the NMI if we hit the reset button it goes to plus yeah this is the problem with this thing sometimes it basically sometimes it's a little git and just doesn't want to play so if we hit it this time yes it goes into so hit the NMI button this is what I mean. This device is alright, but as I said, it's just a bit precarious. I would have preferred it if, in a later revision of this device, the two sort of switches that I use to reset and the NMI, they could be on sort of extended off on a ribbon cable or something, and basically on their own bit of board. It just seems to when you press various buttons on here it just seems to it moves we'll just give that a try again ah it's worked this time so if we go for I don't know swiv so hopefully this time So we go S to start the original. So if I hit the joystick, obviously I'm using the joystick, so yeah, I was never much good at swimming originally, even on the PC or the Amiga or anything like that. It's for its day it was one rock hard game and it doesn't help on playing this one handed with my mobile in my hand so yeah as I said you, you get the you get the basic gist of it so as I said my only major bugbear with this I'll take the DVI off in a second sorry the DIV off in a second and show you it slightly better give me a sec back in a minute Right, this is the device itself, as I said. I'm not sure if my camera's focused. Obviously, it's a standard SD card. It happens to be an 8 gig one because that's what originally came on Raspberry Pi, but I put 32 gig on my Raspberry Pi and used the 8 gig on this one. This one originally, I think, came with a 2 gig card. Somewhere around up here. But I'll have to find it. Obviously, as I said, there's the joystick interface sort of Kempston, Kempston type interface as I said it's a it uses something called ExoDOS I said all links, I'll, I'll put the links as long as I remember in below obviously there's a number of jumpers you have to set on this thing to basically um, say if you're using a plus 2 or plus 2 air and if you're using a joystick on stuff like that Obviously, a couple. Of, there's a gal, some ROM chips, and some other custom chips on there. Obviously, power indicator and everything else. As I said, SD card reset, a few diodes, and other bits and pieces on this board. It's a nicely constructed board. Don't get me wrong. I mean, as I said, this is a live server with my spec. Otherwise, I wouldn't actually be able to use it. So, thank you for taking the time to watch this review and. Leave any comments or questions below and I will attempt to answer them. As I said, I'll put the links in for the chap who, did, who sells this and I'll put the page to eBay as well in the links below. Thank you.